Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. In this video, we're going to be solving an equation with the absolute value or the modulus. Uh, with complex numbers, modulus is a little different. We're going to talk about that. But let's go ahead and talk about uh, alternative methods uh, for solving this problem if they exist. So we have the absolute value of z minus z itself equals 1 plus 2i. Now a couple of things to remember. Absolute value of z is always a non-negative real number. It represents the distance from 0 on the complex plane and it's given by the square root of something squared plus something else squared. Those are the real and imaginary parts of z. We'll talk about those as well. And it's always non-negative. If it's zero, that means we're, we're talking about z being zero. In this case, you can safely say that it's not going to be zero. So we have a non-zero z, which means the absolute value of z is going to be positive. And then we have the z as a complex number. We can write it in standard form. We can write it in so many different forms. So let's go ahead and see if we can solve this problem from different perspectives. First of all, I want to try, and I'm not exactly sure if this is going to give me something nice, but can I take the absolute value of both sides? Because sometimes what happens is when you have an equation and you take the absolute value, then you get another equation which hopefully can be used, right? I think we've seen this in one of our recent videos. There was a problem with z minus i over z plus i being equal to e to the power i theta. I think that was on Monday, right? And then somebody recommended that, okay, why don't we take the absolute value of both sides because that gives us one on the right-hand side and then we could just cross multiply and so on and so forth. That was a really great approach, something that I haven't thought about. But now I learned something from that experience and hopefully I can apply it. Now, if you take the absolute value of both sides, you get something like this. The absolute value of 1 plus 2i is going to be the square root of 1 plus 4, which is root 5. Now, here's the million dollar question. Do you think the absolute value of z sub 1 minus z sub 2, by the way, they represent two complex numbers, or I could probably write it as z minus w, right? Is that equal to the absolute value of z minus the absolute value of d? And that's absolutely not necessarily all the time true. There might be some cases for which is true, but it's not in general true. There is an inequality, uh, which is called, I think, a triangle inequality you can talk about, but I don't think this method is going to give you something nice. So let's go ahead and talk about an alternative. Here's what I can, uh, what else can I, I can think about. Can we use the polar form? Why not, right? So any z can be written as r e to the i theta. And from here, we can write a couple things. For example, what is the absolute value of z in this case? r, remember, represents the modulus or the absolute value. So that's kind of like automatic. We easily find it. And then theta represents the angle, which is given as the positive angle or the angle between the real axis and the segment that, you know, connects the uh, z to the origin. Okay. Anyways, hopefully you get the idea. That's our theta. Okay, then what can I do? I can replace z with r e to the i theta and r with, or the absolute value of z with just r. So r minus e to the, no, it's not, r minus r times e to the i theta, right? That's what z is, equals 1 plus 2i. So here's the challenge. I kind of take out, I can take out a r and then write this as 1 minus e to the i theta, but I would probably need something in polar form on the right hand side. So I kind of have something like 1 plus 2i, which can be actually graphed as 1 comma 2. So it's going to look like this. And then obviously that makes an angle, let's call that angle alpha. And then we can kind of talk about that angle from a tangent perspective. So I can safely say, okay, tangent alpha is 2, and then alpha is supposed to be 10 inverse of 2. But remember, uh, 10 inverse uh, must be an angle between 0 and pi over 2. That's one thing to be careful about, because there are two angles whose tangent is 2, but we're looking for the first quadrant. Make sense? So we can kind of write this as square root of 5 multiplied by uh, e to the power i times 10 inverse of 2. Okay? 
So let's see if this is going to give us something helpful. First of all, we were able to take out R. Now here's the thing that we kind of need to work on, right? How do I simplify this? Well, I can write this as 1 minus cosine theta plus I sine theta. And then I can kind of expand it and write it as 1 minus cosine theta minus I sine theta. And then I could do something like this. I could take, um, take advantage of double angle formulas like, for example, cosine of 2A. Let's use just use an A here is going to be 2 cosine squared a minus 1 or 1 minus 2 cosine squared a or cosine squared minus sine squared. Which one is helpful here? The one that contains a 1 because I'm going to subtract it from 1 and the 1 will cancel out. So I'm going to replace cosine theta with 1 minus 2 cosine squared theta over 2. So I have to use the half angle so that when it's doubled, it gives me theta. For sine theta, there's only one formula which is pretty much universal and that's actually good enough. All right, here's what we got from here. One cancels out. We end up with 2 cosine theta over 2 minus 2i sine theta over 2 cosine theta over 2. And I definitely want to do something like this. I want to take out the cosine. Uh, by the way, that's supposed to be a cosine squared. So I want to take out 2 cosine theta over 2. That's going to give me cosine theta over 2 minus i sine theta over 2. I'm almost there. Notice that this is what's inside the parentheses. And now I can basically, to take care of the minus sign, because sine is an odd function and cosine is even, so I can basically do the following. I can just replace, I can replace theta over 2 with negative theta over 2. So this is going to be positive still, but this will become a negative with the negative theta over 2. So now our argument, the angle is going to be actually negative theta over 2. So now when you set this equal to, and of course there is another r on the outside, right? So we're going to multiply this by r, and this is equal to root 5 times, root 5 times, e to the power i times 10 inverse of 2, okay? You could call that alpha, and then you could probably just go off of that. Make sense? Now, here's what's going to happen here. I know this is going to take a long time, so I'm probably not going to finish it. But you can write this as e to the power negative i times theta over 2. And from here, you can basically set these parts and find the theta using inverse tangent uh, functions. Anyways, so that was kind of like my second attempt. And let's go ahead and take a look at the third approach which is usually the common method used for these kinds of problems, which is kind of, uh, I think, better. And that will be the standard form. Replace z with a plus b, i, what's the name of this channel? And then you're going to get the square root of a squared plus b squared minus a minus b, i is equal to 1 plus 2, i. And then we're going to go ahead and solve an equation here. This is the real part that's equal to 1, and b is supposed to be negative 2, because that's the imaginary part, right? So now, go ahead and write down uh, our first equation. a squared plus 4 minus a is uh, supposed to equal 1. Go ahead and add a to both sides. The rest will be a piece of cake. And then square both sides. You want to get rid of the radical. And a squared is also going to cancel out, giving you a really nice result. And from here, 2a is going to be 3. a is going to be 3 halves. What is b? b is negative 2. So the only solution that you get from here for z is going to be 3 halves minus 2i, right? That's going to be the answer. And this should normally bring us to the end of this video, but let's go ahead and take a look if we have any result from Wolfram Alpha. I'm not exactly sure if I did, and yes, I did. Alternate form assuming z is greater than 0, false. Okay, this is not z is not real. And the approx I don't know what it's called, approximate forms. That will be the answer. 3 halves minus 2i. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.